Welcome to Google Classroom. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to create new courses in Google Classroom and also give you some things to think about as you're setting up your courses for the upcoming school year. Now, right now I am in Google Classroom and if you wanna follow along, you will need to visit classroom.google.com. This is where you will create new courses and access any previous courses that you've created. You can see already that I have one class uh, listed here and you know additional classes will show up um, as I create them. Uh, in here. To create a class, it's very simple. You're simply going to click on this plus button at the top of the screen. You'll see two options, the ability to join a class. So if you wanted to join a class from a um, other teacher in your district, or if your principal creates a class for staff communication, you could join it. But we are going to create a class. Now creating a class is incredibly simple. Really, all you have to do is give your class a name and click create. That's it. But there are, is some strategy that you wanna think about before you start rapid fire creating your courses. Um, the first thing that I would recommend doing is thinking about what does your schedule look like? So you can see I already have um, my world history class first period, and I would strongly encourage you to create a separate Google Classroom for every prep that you have and every section that you teach, okay? The general rule of thumb with Google Classroom is you want your Google Classroom roster to match your grade book roster. That way when you're transcribing grades or if you're lucky enough to have grade transfer, um, the grades from classroom match the grades in your district grade book. So I teach world history first period and third period. So I'm gonna create another class, world history. And then in the section, I'm gonna just say third period. And you can, you know, you can do it this way, you can do third hour, however you want to specify it. Um, and that will be displayed, you see down there um, on your class card. Now, over time, if you use Google Classroom for many years, what will happen is you're going to end up with a lot of classes called world history. And so I would recommend being a little more descriptive in the class name. I always like to include the year um, in the class name like that. And I like to include the semester. Now this is personal preference and you're going to have to give some thought to this. I would strongly encourage you if you teach a year long course, I would strongly encourage you to create one class for semester one and then start fresh after the semester break and create a, you know, a new class for semester two. That's what I would recommend. Uh, Google Classroom, as it fills with grades and content, it starts to load a little bit slower. And if you try to do a full year worth of content, it just gets really cluttered and difficult to manage. Now, some teachers go even one step further and have started to do um, a class for every quarter. So every marking period, they create a new Google Classroom, um, and that allows them to kind of shut the old class down so students can't turn in work you know across marking periods um, and start fresh each marking period that's personal preference you get to decide you want to do one class for the whole year one class for a semester one class for the quarter totally up to you um, that's your uh, your preference um, very important to be again descriptive uh, with that first field um, the other fields here subject and room you can fill them out if you want they really don't go anywhere um, they, they're not very helpful so i usually just uh, use them uh, leave them blank we'll go ahead and uh, create that class and uh, we'll have a new class card that'll appear right next to our first period course now this is the strategy that i would recommend if you teach um, middle or high school courses uh, if you are an elementary teacher, uh, I have some specific strategies for you because you're self-contained. There are some more nuances. So I'm going to link to a special video for elementary teachers that will guide you through some of the setup process. Thanks for watching and good luck as you set up your courses.